Hey guys, it's Gail with Everything Nash, back again with Michael Ray, who we love so much. And I know it's been a busy day for you, so thank you for talking to us today. Absolutely. Okay, so if you're not tired of talking about higher education yet, let's talk about higher education. I love it so much. I've had it on repeat today. If you had to describe it, how would you describe it? Uh, this EP is what I've been ha what I've had in my mind for for a long time. It's it's truly is what I what was what I was trying to get out for years. You know, I think um, if I had to describe it, I'd describe it as a touch of the '80s, '90s, or 2000s mixed with today. Um, I think you hear influences from all over. I was raised in that middle ground of Southern rock and and you know, classic rock, classic country and 90s country. And I think you're going to hear a blend of that. So it's like if those two came together and uh, and was on the same record, but it was produced by Ross Copperman and sang by me. <laughs> and you have two songs that you wrote on it. I've said this to you before. I'm going to say it again. I love your songwriting. Thank you. Can you give me the story? My favorite song on the whole album is Didn't Know I Was Country. Can you give me the story behind that? That's such a good song. Thank you. We, it was actually the last song we wrote for the project. Um, I was FaceTiming my buddy Taylor Phillips, who's a writer in town, and we were just talking about, you know, when you're from a small town where it's traditions and, and you know, you truly grow up generational stuff. You know, where I'm from, I'm eight generation, some, something like that, and from Eustis. And, you know, you grew up doing the same things your dad did. You grew up doing the same things your mom did. You grew up riding the same place. You grew up on the same, uh, you know, clay pits. You grew up doing the same stuff, and it's, it's just this – you know, it's cool, cool circle. And that's what makes small town so great. That's what makes going back home so great is, you know, things change when you go home, they stay the same, but you think that that's what everybody does. You know, you think everybody lived that way when you were a kid, I, you didn't know any different. And we had to talk about it because Taylor was moving back to North Carolina after having a few hits and building his dream home down there. And so we talked about it and, and we reached out to Ashley Gorley, the a hit songwriter in town. And, uh, we wrote the song. It took us a few sessions to write it because I think we knew that we had something special. But then I started playing it out and started seeing the reaction at writers' rounds with it, and, and that reaction of people that may not even be from the country; they're from other parts of the world, parts of the United States, that they put their life in there. You know, they, it was, and, and that's what we hoped we would have. Is you know, you didn't know. I didn't know I was country, but thank God I am because I wouldn't be who I am today. You know, and, and thank God I went through those experiences. I didn't know any different. I just cut up like my dad did. I wasn't trying to be this way. It's just who I am. And uh, I think as you get older, you realize who you are, but you don't know that until you, until you start traveling a little bit and seeing things that are different. So uh, that's probably that's probably my favorite song I've ever written, to be honest with you. Yeah, I would say so, too. So you told me before that you had a lot of you had spent time at home last year, which is very healing for you in a lot of ways. And you kind of found yourself again. Do you think you could have done this album if you hadn't spent that time at home? Uh, no, I, I really, no, I really, if I'll be real, I think, um, I think all the, all the shit, all the stuff of last year, um, and then being home, I think is what made me come, come to reality that I didn't, I, I you know, as I'm proud of everything we've put out, I'm proud of everything that we've done, but is it 100% me? No. You know, I, I had friends of mine that were telling me, they're like, man, we know this part about you, but sonically, musically, that's not, it's two different things. And I never took that as a fence. I took it as like a wing, uh, you know, light bulb went off and it was like, that's what I'm missing. And I think, you know, going through everything last year and everybody going through 2020, you have to reflect on life and you kind of put in a fork in the road. You're going to let it beat you or you're going to, you know, rise from it, make it, make it, make you better. And, uh, you know, I come from, my dad used to always tell me, you know, there's a reason why, you know, a blacksmith beats a sword to death, you know, beats the hell out of it, beats the hell out of it. And at the end of it, it's a sharp piece of iron sword that can, you know, conquer nations and can do great things. But but to get to that, you had to be beat the hell out of it. You know, and you had to, had to be put in fire and out, freezing and all this stuff. And so I think just through that whole process and, and, and the dark times, I found the, found the light in it and, and, and honestly just became uh, very confident in who I am and, and, and what I want to say and what I want to do and, and just realized that I wasn't, showing a hundred percent of myself. I wasn't being that, that, that guy that I wanted to be. And I felt, I felt that. I think I just didn't know that's what I felt. And, you know, maybe that was insecurity, maybe that's fear of failure or whatever it is. But um, I think having everything taken away from you like that, like everybody did last year, fear of failure goes away and, and fear just becomes a motivator. I love that fear of failure goes away. So am I reading too much into this? And you can tell me if I am. It feels like there's more of a spiritual theme throughout this album than you've had in anything you've released in the past. Yeah, absolutely. I, I, this is definitely my most well put together body of work. 
um, of art. I think they all go together. They all complement. They're all there's all something for different level, levels of of life of coming out of what we're all coming through. And and you know, I think during last year there was times where I questioned faith. There was times where I questioned God. But uh, just like a great parent, you you always end up going back to those and, and going back even that you know. And they go, I know, I know you ran off. I know you, I know you had to realize it for your own. Um, and I think coming back and just really being more in touch with myself. Uh, being in touch with myself in, in that area of life as well, more than I probably have been in the last five, six years. Um, I think really shows in this record, and I think is why we were so strategic in, in what songs we placed in, what songs we recorded, what songs we wrote, very uh, purposeful in everything that we did in this record, because I kind of already had it in my head before we even went to the studio, what I wanted and how I wanted it, what kind of songs I wanted it to be, and it just kind of all fell that way, I think, because I was just being myself, you know what I mean, making that music that I wanted to make. I wasn't having to try to fit in. I wasn't having to try to do a pop country thing. I wasn't trying to have to do this. I was just doing what I love to do and follow my gut instinct. And, and back in the day, I'd be like, ah, maybe I shouldn't say that. What if that's stupid? What if I, you know, and now it's like, well, what, what, they, what should I say? No. But what I was learning is a lot of times when I would say that gut instinct, it was the right thing because it, this is, this is my project is what I'm trying to get out. And, uh, and so I think all together, just, it, it helped it all. And, and it really helped make this whole EP what it is. And I think on the next half of the CP that comes out when that does, I think you're going to see more of songs that I've written on it. I think you'll see more of what you, what you're witnessing on this record. Well, I love it. Um, the title track, like, how did I not know this was happening with Lee Bryce and Billy Gibbons and Tim Montana who I'm a big fan of, <laughs> and Kid Rock. I mean, Michael, Michael, <laughs> what, what the heck, Michael? How in the world did this happen? I mean, you could have had just one of them, and it'd be amazing. And you have these four ginormous <laughs> artists on there. I knew I wanted a collaboration on here, and I knew I wanted it to be something organic. I wanted it to be something with buddies of mine or, or artists that influenced me. I didn't want it to be just some kind of like put together, established, you know, the establishment put together, and was like, oh, I didn't want anybody. Everything I was using somebody's coattail or cloud chasing or whatever to get anybody. I wanted it to be true people that I hang out with and buddies of mine. And so Tim Montana played me higher education and. We were just going back and forth playing each other's songs, and I thought I love that song. And I was like, "Man, what are you doing with that?" He said, "Nothing." I said, "Man, I want to do a collaboration, but you know, I don't know what to do." And Tim said, "Man, Tim is the reason I'm buddies with Kid Rock and Billy, my uh, Kid Rock and Billy Gibbons, and uh, I, I've been friends with those guys for for a while now, but through Tim." And so Tim's like, "Dude, we can get Billy on it for sure." And I was like, "Are you kidding me? It's easy to talk. That's my, you know, my dad's favorite band, one of my favorite bands of all time, one of the biggest iconic bands in music." Billy agreed to do it immediately and we sent it to Kid Rock and Kid fell in love with it and he agreed to do it and did it at his place and we were headed to Arkansas on Lee Bryce's bus going duck hunting and me and Tim played that song for him and and we we're like dude you gotta be on it too and he he, he agreed to be on it and, and threw his vocals on it and his talent on it and and I, I'll be honest with you it <laughs> our friend group is so ecle so eclectic that I told Tim I said if this comes together if we do this I'm not telling anybody like we're just going to go and do it and then we'll deliver this train to the, you know, to the station. We'll deliver it already put together to management, to the label, to everybody. Because, I, you know, again, we're during quarantine. So people are going to be, oh, you know, is this I, I knew people would go, are you sure you want to do it with them? Are you sure you don't want to? You know, what if we try here? We do this. And I knew in my mind how great it would turn out. I just had to bring it to everybody to show everybody, hey. Because on paper, it's going to be like, okay, so let me hear this, Michael. You want Billy Gibbons from ZZ Top. You want Kid Rock. You're going to get Lee Bryce, and you're going to get Tim Montana, and you're going to do this. Yeah, because they're all my buddies. I wanted, I, I wanted to bypass all that, all the noise, and just go straight into go. I knew it was going to be great. I knew they were going to crush it. So I didn't tell anybody. My management didn't know. The label didn't know. Nobody knew. We went in and cut it. They did their parts, and then, uh, and then we were able to bring it together uh, and play a, a full. What you hear on the EP is what my management label everybody heard for the first time it's amazing and can we just stop for a second and say that you're friends with philly gibbons i mean michael it's it's pretty crazy yeah thanks hey man I, it still blows my mind he'll he tells us old stories you know and 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 again i'm just very grateful that tim opened those doors and, and let me let me meet those guys that he's been you know like family with for a long time and it, it is it is nuts one of my favorite things me and tim talk about it is is well you know billy goes and picks up tim's kids from school you know so but Billy looks like Billy Gibbons on stage at ZZ Top at all times. So he's always in that suit. And he's literally, the dude was born with more swag than anybody known to man. And he's in his late 70s. You know, like he's, he's, he's just who he is. It oozes out of him. He's the coolest guy ever. 
in the most nicest. He's he's everything you want a rock star to be. You know, he's just a, he's he's everything you want it to be. Um, but seeing people when you you know we'll drop him off at you know maybe he's staying somewhere at a hotel or whatever. And I, th- I think people's eyes are heightened in Nashville. They you know oh who's that? Oh that looks like somebody. Well, there's no questioning who Billy Gibbons is. You know, so you see people just like. I, I, and I think it's like seeing Sasquatch for them. Like they don't want to go up and say anything. I don't, there's just, just like, wait a minute. You're, you know, and then by that point he's gone, you know, uh, but, but when fans talk to him, he, he takes the time uh, to talk to everybody and, and really gives you that moment that you want as a fan with, you know, somebody like Billy Gibbons. So it is, it's crazy to me to, to think that the guy that I grew up listening to my dad play, you know, legs and sharp dressed man and, uh, I was riding in a you know shotgun seat in my dad's truck as a kid, my feet kicking, I didn't even touch the floorboard. Now this many years later, is uh, is on a song with me, and a, and, and I consider him a, a friend. is uh, is pretty pretty crazy. Yeah, if I met him, I would be not cold. I can tell you that right now. I would. <laughs> we can make that happen. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, your mouth to God's ears. Okay, before I let you go, and I wouldn't be mad about that, by the way. Um, before I let you go, touring. How are we feeling about it? Are you excited? And is COVID worrying you at all? Um, I, you know, we've been, we've been back pretty heavy since uh, the beginning of July. We hit some shows during June, um, had some different dates. Um, but, uh, you know, I know COVID is a very real thing. I know that the, the virus is, is something real and it's affecting a lot of people. Um, you know, I'm, I believe that we live in, in the best country in the world that, that I believe we give the rights to people to choose what they, uh, should do for their own, what they feel is the right thing to do for their own self and their own families and their own bodies. And men and women have laid the law down or laid, laid their life down uh, for, for both sides of that. And I think that, you know, um, having education, educated conversations with people that might see the same a different way than you is how we grow, you know? And so for me, um, I know it's a real thing, but, but I also know that living life is a real thing. And, and I also know that, that, that being together is what this country was meant to do. It's what human beings were meant to do. And taking that away is only going to divide us more. And, and I, I, and so I was just so excited to get back on tour because being off the tour, just, it, it messed me up, you know, just like it messed up everybody else. And I didn't realize how much I was leaning on those weekend days and that bus call on Wednesday nights. And, and, you know, we just encourage people to, you know, if they feel comfortable, come out to a show and, uh, and, and know that it's going to be just like it was in 2019. And, and we're going to, we're going to hit it hard and, and uh, and give you everything we got because we missed the hell out of everybody for 15 months and we missed that that drug you know and that drug was that moment on stage with each other where the fans and us on stage and everybody together we just shut off reality for a little bit and there isn't no divide there isn't no conversation about stuff one thing matters is country music and everybody come together for that moment and they have their arm around a guy that they never even met before you know and they're they're bottom beers and you might never see that person again or you might just met somebody that'll be your best friend for the rest of your life you never know and so I think as much real as COVID is, um, I think, you know, there's a mental health that's going on with all this that we're not even talking about. And I think getting out and living life uh, and, and getting people back together uh, is what will help that mental health part of it. Um, and getting people back together, loving life and living um, is, 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 is very important. I love it. Well, I've seen you live and you're phenomenal. And I hope to catch you on this tour at some point too. So. Thank you so much. Thanks for joining us. Good to see you as always. I will chat with you anytime as everybody knows. Hey, absolutely. I love it. Love you. Thank you so much.